Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. I pray you are okay. And I pray that you are ready for this day. You know, this day may come with its challenges, but we are not without help because God promised us that he will be with us to be our shield and our buckler and our fortress. Amen. And so, as you go through today, may you fall on him and may you trust in him as he continues to watch over you. Our reading today comes to us from 1 Thessalonians 4, reading 13 to 18. And it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of our Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another, with these words. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his word one more time. And this is a very, you know, comforting message this morning to all of us. Here the writer encourages the believers about being hopeful. Now he draw their attention to the resurrection of Christ and his second coming. And he told them that they should not mourn or sorrow as one without hope. He's saying that if we believe in Jesus, that's the key word there. If. So if we believe that Jesus has been resurrected, then it therefore means that we need not to sorrow. So if you do not believe, then I can understand why you have no hope. Because you must believe. And we believe because we are sure. And we have faith. Now, in terms of the believing that Jesus is resurrected, who has the key over death, hell and the grave? Jesus, right? So, we are believing in the right person. The person who has life, able to give life. So, if you are on the side of the person who has life, then you have no reason to fear. Something to think about. Amen. He went on to comfort them by explaining to the believers that those who die in Christ will raise again. And so, he encouraged them that they should not mourn our sorrow as one without hope and the same goes for us today so i know that you know we are connected and we are close to our loved ones and our friends and when we lose them when they die we feel so broken and we feel so hurt but as christians and especially if these individuals were living godly lives before they died we must have hope in our heart that we will see them again. Yes, we will still miss them and we will, would have wished they are still around. But we must not mourn our sorrow like it's the end of the world. Because it's not the end. In fact, it's a threshold to a new beginning for those who are in Christ. Because it means, therefore, that the next time they wake up, 
they will wake to the new life. Amen. And so he went on to explain that those who are alive in Christ, we have no power over the dead. And therefore, we cannot prevent those who are dead in Christ or those who are asleep, because the Bible calls it asleep. Those who are asleep in Christ from raising up on the resurrection morning. We can't stop them. In fact, the Bible says that at the coming of Christ, what is going to happen? The dead in Christ will rise first. Isn't that what it says? In, in, in verse 16, it says that what? For the Lord himself shall descend from where? From heaven with a shout. With a what? A shout. No, what is a shout? means there's there's sound involved right so this is no secret rapture so if the lord is coming back he won't be coming back in any secret to snatch anybody and to snatch anyone from here and from there no so this passage right here so this verse right here so and this passage it eliminate the whole idea of any secret rapture that is out there because what this goes against that concept the bible is saying that god is gonna descend from heaven with what a shout when you shout you don't whisper amen and then it says that the archangel together when that trumpet is sounding and bellowing across the clouds and the eastern sky what is gonna happen the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Isn't that what the word of God says? And then we who are alive, because I plan to be there and I want to be there. And I pray that you want to be there too. We who are alive and remain faithful. So not just being alive, but those of us who have remained faithful through the times will be caught up together with those who were asleep to do what to meet god or saving king in the air so it's gonna be like an alarm clock so you're asleep and the alarm goes off to wake you up to let you know that it's time to get up amen isn't that a pleasant thing to imagine and to, to, to wait with great expectancy to receive that glorious reward. Amen. Of course it is. I am looking forward to that. And I pray that you are looking forward to that too. Amen. Yes. And so we are to do what? Comfort each other in the meantime while we wait with these things he says. We have hope. Yes. The world, the world mourn as though they have no hope most of the time. Because what? The hope that the world is built on is false, is not anything that will last. And so that is why each time, you know, someone out of Christ go through their struggles, they oftentimes feel more hopeless than even when they first begin because what they can't see no way out of their situation but we know that the god that we serve is a way maker and so even when the room is dark even when there's a mountain standing in front of us we can still see through the mountain see the mountain moving out of our way because what? We have hope that this mountain, it shall and will move in Jesus' name. What does the Bible say? The Bible says if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, what can we do? We can move mountain. And so don't be afraid to go through the struggles because you are not alone. And God has a reward for you. Amen? And so... When we lose our loved one, let's remember as long as that loved one was living according to God and this principle, then that loved one 
is perfectly fine. You don't need to worry about them. They are okay. Where you need to be concerned now, as much as you can't do anything for them then, is if they live a life out of Christ. But as, as I said, it even doesn't make any sense to even worry at that point anymore. Because you can't do anything for them anymore. Because they are what? Dead. And the next voice that they will hear is the voice of God. So it doesn't even make sense to, to, to waste energy. I know it sounds harsh, but it's the facts. You can't do anything for the dead. So yes, you hurt and you feel a pain. Trust me, I know it's not an easy thing because I have lost people close to me. And so I know what it feels like to lose the one you love. And I know you know too. But there is hope. There's hope beyond the grave. The grave is not the final resting place. When Jesus comes, he is coming to offer reward to all those who have been faithful to him. And so, if you are alive when he comes, you will get that reward. And if you are asleep when he comes, you will rise to receive your reward. So may we look forward in faith to that day when Christ will come and take us out of this place to our new home where he has gone to prepare for us. May God continue to bless you and to bless all of us as we keep faithful and to keep on holding on. Amen.